Hello everybody, Piton here, and welcome back to the Minecraft Hang. It's been a while, hope you guys didn't miss me too bad. Or if you did, that's nice. Nice to be missed. Um, I've been working on purifying, purifying, prettying up, dressing up, however you want to call it. The uh, zombie spawner here, the zombie purifier, zombie sorter. Oh, I still don't have a name for it. All my names suck anyway. <laughs> but today, um, I went to add some new uh, redstone features to this thingy. Because uh, we've got some sweet stuff from the mine. Uh, what was it? 1.5 update? Comparators, hoppers, droppers, and the like. And I'd really like to get some of those in on the action so we can take this to the future. Um, and if you don't know what this is, um, this is a zombie sorting system. It sorts um, persistent zombies from non persistent ones, uh, kills the non persistent ones, and sends the carts back here, and then sends the persistent zombies to uh, an undisclosed location. Um, for example, Z-Town, um, the uh, abandoned zombie village, and then another uh, project that I haven't started yet. But it's always nice to have uh, persistent zombies around whenever you need them for any kind of fun activities. And if you don't know what persistent zombies are, um, they're zombies that uh, will not despawn uh, no matter how far you, away you go. Because usually, you know, uh, hostile mobs will despawn um, if you get, like, what, 100 and, like, instantly if you get 128 blocks away. Uh, but if a zombie's holding something or wearing something, uh, like a pumpkin on his head, which is what we do, <laughs> then they will not despawn. So one of the things I wanted to add uh, to the system is this little doohickey. Uh, and first I'll explain what that is by checking this out. So these rails right now are powered by a one tick clock. Um, and when you have a minecart, ah, hello, minecart, um, pass over these powered rails that are alternately powered and unpowered, uh, one tick each. Um, go. <laughs> there we go. Then uh, the cart will go slowly uh, in this direction. And basically what that does is it gives us more time to uh, let the sunlight in and burn away the zombies that aren't protected. Uh, with a pumpkin on their heads. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it might be a good idea to go back and watch uh, that episode where I built this to begin with. But if, um, I mean, you'll probably get the hang of it. It's not so much. Um, so, the problem I was having with, I keep coming back up, the problem I was having with uh, this rail is that sometimes when you unload the chunks and come back, uh, this thing is just fully powered. Um, and that's no good. Because then it's just full-blown power rail and then the zombies speed right through and uh, even if they're burning they don't die and well, that's not what we want we want to sort very specifically so I came up with this device um, luckily uh, Minecraft was kind and the um, time it takes for a piston to extend is just the right amount of time uh, for this torch to power off turning this into a one tick clock so I've got a lever here it's going to turn this torch off and it's also going to extend this piston at the same time pushing this block in front of this loaded repeater and uh, causing it to cycle in its clock state. So here we go. Amazing. That was the most interesting thing I've ever seen. Um, but yeah, what that's going to do is it's going to give us the opportunity to um, turn off that power rail and then turn it back on. Basically, it just acts as a reset in case uh, the rails ever get stuck in a fully powered state. So that's one thing I want to add today. Um, I've put a light switch in here. I'm not going to turn it off because I think zombies would spawn. And that'd just be annoying. Um, and I also want to add uh, something that checks the daylight strength. Because if it's raining, then it's... Even if it's day, then that's not... Um, it's not going to be enough sunlight to burn away the zombies. I also want to add... Oh, just a cactus reclaimer? Or cactus hopper situation? Basically, when a minecart runs into a cactus... Um, it can be picked up. Well, it drops as an entity, um, but if you have a hopper next to it, maybe I can demonstrate this real quick. Um, carts, please. Uh, awesome. And hoppers. So I have a hopper. New. No, but I did have the makins for a hopper. Yeah, so let's make a hopper. Just 
I remembered the recipe this time. <laughs> okay, so we've got all this stuff ready to roll. Let's go back over to our testing area over here. So we've got sand, cactus, hopper, uh, and just, oops, rail, rail, rail. That's, why did I do that? <laughs> so, rail, 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 rail. Awesome. So, it's going to hit the cactus, and when it breaks, you might think, like, man, this uh, cart might hit the cactus, and then uh, the entity, dropped entity, will disappear because the cactus does that to stuff. Like, I will demonstrate with this piece of dirt. I will demonstrate with dirt. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it wasn't the best demonstration. But anyway. Uh -huh. It breaks, and then the hopper picks it up before the cactus can break it. So, sweet. That's going to work quite nicely. Don't ask me why I broke that wishes shovel. I wouldn't have an answer for you. So, that's another thing I want to add. And finally, the coup de gras, the mercy blow. I want to add a way to count how many zombies we have that are persistent. Like, how many zombies we have amassed uh, going in this direction. Because the uh, empty carts are sent back that way which is where we'll put our cactus uh, reclaimer. And then the other zombies will be sent, the persistent zombies will be sent this way, which doesn't go anywhere yet, but it will eventually once we figure out where to send them. So I guess now I'm going to do some of the more boring stuff, like installing these, this doohickey. The official name for that is a doohickey. I'm going to, I don't know, put this light switch somewhere nicer. And I'm also going to add... Um, the daylight sensor, and I'm also going to add the cactus thingy, and then maybe I'll give updates along the way. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get started, and I'll see you guys in uh, just a sec. Check out this little creepy area. Ooh. Ooh. It's filled with the badness. I totally forgot I had blocked off this part of the mine when I was making room for the uh, so the zombie spawner is like right above us. You can see the outline here. Ooh, we should probably light this up. I was running a wire down, which is why I'm down here. Um, connecting the uh, clocks to the, to the master switch further up. Should be right through here. Right? Hit the right level. Yeah, there it is. Cool. Well, I'll get back to you when I have some more real progress to report. All right, guys, we're back and made some massive progress, as you can see by this little torch here. Um, I forgot to bring another redstone lamp, so this cobblestone with the torch is acting as a lamp, and the actual indicator right now is being serviced by this redstone torch. Uh, but basically, this is our daylight strength detector. This is wired to a daylight detector way up there uh, that checks to see how strong the sunlight is, and if it can send a strength of 11 blocks, which is one block further than the signal it sends uh, when it's raining, then uh, we'll know we're good to go, good to cook some zombies. So that's good. Um, I've got other oh, light switches. That's that. Uh, this is this thingy. Um, basically just ran a wire all the way down here. Um, that's this wire. And it acts as... Um, yeah, well, you saw it before. That little doohickey. Um, here we've got the cactus hopper chain um, cart retrieval system. I'm so bad at names, man. So bad. Um, anyway, um, I'm going to fill it up with lots of carts because we're probably going to want a lot of zombies for what I have in mind further down the road. And then... Um, that's everything I've made so far. Now, the last thing I want to do is install our zombie counter and this will also act as like a master switch um, that will turn uh, this system on basically. We'll come to think of it I'm gonna need some sort of clock for this. Hmm. I'll figure that out later. But basically here's how I want it to work um, and it's actually a really simple idea. Oh, that's a wire. 
Um, I'll fix it later. So, <laughs> worry about that later. I'm going to use this dropper, and I'm going to connect it to a comparator, right? Yeah. And then that is going to connect to a redstone repeater. And this, oops. What this is going to do is check to see that there are items in this hopper. So, say I want five zombies. I'm going to put five whatever. Let's use cobble. In here. And it's going to send a signal out that we're going to take connected to a clock um, at this dispenser. And it's going to basically turn on the machine and get five zombies out. And the zombies will be sent down. Here's my detector rail. Since the zombies are sent down a separate path from the empty carts, we can say, what's down there? Nothing. Okay. Let's cover this up. We can say every time a zombie passes over, ooh, another hole, passes over a detector rail, we can put like here. I don't know. Whatever. Um, we can take a pulse from that, send it all the way back here to this, to maybe like a torch underneath this guy. Let's make some more torches. Always run out of redstone torches. Always run out of redstone too, this project. Yeah, and so every time it sends a pulse to this torch, it will dispense an item, you can see. So we could set up a way to retrieve um, like the cobble or whatever junk block we throw in there, but it's gonna be junk, so it's not really terribly important to me that we get it back. Um, the main thing I want to do is just be able to accurately count the zombies. Now, the one thing about this is that there's going to be like a margin of error um, since unless we set the clock to like an incredibly long amount of time, long enough for one zombie to come out down this track, back around, back through, and send a pulse to that. Um, but I don't really want to wait that long. I'm... I'm starting to understand that this probably isn't making a lot of sense since you can't see much of anything. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, but the idea is that, like, basically we'll get an approximation of... Okay, you can see this light just went off. That means the sunlight strength. Yeah. It's probably still okay for cooking zombies, but when we see that go off, we'll know that it's time to turn off the machine. So anyway, um, I basically just want to be able to get fairly close to the amount of zombies... Um, that we want and if we want to get super accurate then I can just slow down the clock I have attached to this dispenser or I, the clock that I will have attached to this dispenser and that way we'll be a <laughs> another hole um, why are there so many random holes about uh, there we go okay so instead of boring you guys with redstone stuff on camera um, I'm thinking I'm going to go ahead and start wiring up just the long wires because everybody knows how to place redstone and stuff so this part won't be too interesting so I'm going to go ahead and start sending this signal back uh, oh man down to a stack of redstone I hope I have more uh, but yeah I'm going to take this back to uh, the zombie spawner up there oops <laughs> don't know my own strength and I'll see you guys uh, when I have some more interesting progress be right back. All right, guys. I've run some wires. I ran this one all the way from the detector plate. And that goes... Let's see. This... Oh, it's a mess. It's a mess because I haven't blocked this off. Um, there we go. That goes here. This gun goes here. Yeah. Up. Oh, let me up. There we go. There's a torch behind that dirt block. Right there it is. You can see it. And that's right underneath the dropper, so that's great. Then we've got this line, which comes all the way down from the... Yeah, I'll just stick something in there. Um, the dropper comparator repeater setup. That runs all the way down there. It's a bit of a mess. I'm stuck. Okay, I keep getting lost in my own wiring. Um, and that runs all the way over here. Okay, so it's time to set up a clock. Now, I think I'm just going to use, like, the simplest clock in the book. 
probably because I'm a simple man with simple tastes. Um, so let's just throw down some well blocks in the corners as well. Um, I'll, I'll worry about fancying up the wire in a bit, but let's see. Yes, yeah, so let's just. Uh, that's fine. Don't need the button anymore. I didn't know buttons are so uh, strong. It takes them quite a bit to break. Here we go. Very good. I haven't really been thinking about what I'm doing quite yet. Uh, who knows how much time this is going to take. Oh, oh, oh. Let's stop that for for now. Um, so this is just a repeater clock. Basically, a, a pulse will travel, you know, in a circle around this repeater. Um, but what I want to do is set up a piston here. Right. No. Yeah, here. Um, so maybe the wire might need to be a little bit longer. And, but basically, repeaters can send uh, signals through a piston, right? So basically, this piston will act as an on-off switch, essentially. If the block isn't extended, no signal will pass here, because I'm not putting redstone wire on here. Um, and that means that I want to power... Uh, let's see. That, just like that. So right now, I like to think of this as, like, loaded. As soon as the piston extends... Um, that's kind of a long signal, though, isn't it? Well, for it, who cares? Um, but it ain't got to be perfect. So let's dig out some obsidian here. Ooh. Hello. Untimely demise. Nice to meet you. Have a good day. No thanks, not interested. We'll just send this wire also this way. Man, this sucks up redstone like crazy. Oh, you know what? That's not right. Um, I want it to be basically such that uh, when the signal is on, the piston is extended, and the there should be like a man. Let's put a torch here. Yeah, actually, let's do something better. Um, let's put the torch underneath the block. Break more obsidian on camera, because I know you guys love that. <laughs> um, I'll wash away all my wires. I'm a clever man. <laughs> and, yeah, we'll take that. Okay. That's good. So basically when the signal comes through, uh, what am I doing? <laughs> what are you doing? Okay. Get it together. What am I doing? I want to... S um, give me a second. I need to figure my brain out. I fixed it. I fixed my brain. It wasn't working, but <laughs> now it's working again. Oh, man. Do you guys ever have those moments where you're just like, doo, I don't know what's going on? Especially with redstone, it happens to me a lot, which is why I tend not to do much of it on camera. Excuse me. Okay. So if anybody can explain to me why I thought, ooh, we're sprinting action, why I thought putting the piston down there was a good idea. Uh, I mean, good luck. I have no idea why I thought that was a good idea. So I put the piston over here. Um, basically... Just taking the signal straight out of this block. And I delayed it with this repeater just because I want it to look pretty when it goes around. I'll break that just in case. Um, like that. So it's just like one repeater on at a time. Bit of a perfectionist sometimes. Um, so I don't know if that is a good timing yet. We're going to have to, I don't know, stress test the system. Stress test the system and see how that does excuse me 
Calm down. Calm yourself. So, but I'm th oops, not water. Um, I'm thinking it's looking okay. Um, right now, this the reason this line is active is because um, there's something in the dropper. So if we just climb on up, yeah. So if I take it out, yeah, piston retracts. It's all good. And this is loaded, so. Yeah, well that's everything I wanted to add to the system today. Unfortunately, I have to go somewhere. Um, so I don't have time to like, jimmy around with it, work out all the kinks, because I'm sure there are kinks. But as far as I know, we are good, oh, gonna need more pumpkins, but we are good to go with this thing. Now if you're wondering what I need zombies for, what like, what I would want persistent zombies for, um, oh, here's that cart, good. Oh, okay, I was using it on the, good, 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 good. I'm smarter than I think sometimes. Um, oh, if you're wondering why I needed zombies, um, if you haven't seen the episode, I think it's called Z-Town. Um, I'm basically building a village close to something semi-important, not semi-important, it's close to something important, actually. A uh, little surprise I have for you guys later. But it's basically a village of persistent zombies, is what I want. I want there to always be zombies living in the houses and all that stuff. And I had another project idea. Um, this one's going to be a bit bigger. Why am I hitting this with a sword? I don't know. Um, but basically, um, it's going to be kind of like a shoot 'em art. Where am I going? <laughs> I just wonder where I'm going to talk sometimes. It's not good. Uh, let's do something productive instead. Like fix the wall. Um, but I'm having ideas like maybe you could make some sort of uh, arcade type of thing where you stand in one place and zombies on like mine carts will like ride around and you have to like shoot at them from different sides and then there's like a score counter or something that checks how quickly it takes um, or how quickly you can kill all the zombies or how long it takes for you to kill them um, things like that um, but that's going to be a heck of a project and that's much further down the road um, but then there are lots of things you can do with zombies. I'm sure you guys are probably thinking of some of them right now. But anyway, uh, that's going to be it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of The Hang. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys again next time. Bye-bye.